In this sponsored video for Cloudways, I'll take you through setting up WordPress multi-site alongside several other things, things like connecting GitHub, setting up your SSL certificates, mapping a domain, and a few other things. Now, this is a sponsored video, so as always, there's no opinions. I'm just gonna demonstrate how things work. So now we know what we're going to do, let's take a look at actually doing it. So first thing we need to do is go ahead and set our server up. To do that, I've already gone over to Cloudways and logged into my account, but if you haven't, you can just create an account and follow along with me. I'm gonna to click to add a new server. This allows us then to, first of all, choose the application we're going to use or set up. Now an application when it comes to Cloudways is basically the software you want to install on your new server. For example, WordPress, those kinds of things. So if we open this up, you can see multi-site version 6.x is an option. So we're gonna choose that from there. We're gonna give this a name. We'll just call this my multi-site. We can name our server. And if you want to, you can select a project. I'm gonna leave that blank for now. Next up, we can choose the server that we want to use. Now we've got a range of five different options from DigitalOcean right the way through to Google Cloud Platform. Each of these will have different options, different settings, and different prices. For our example, we're gonna choose DigitalOcean. Underneath then, you can see we can set up our server size. It gives us recommendations depending upon the type of application that we're creating and setting up. In this example, it recommends two gigabytes as a minimum. We can override and ignore that if we want to. We can set it to lower while we set things up and then scale it up when we've got everything ready. Or if you want to hit the ground running, you can choose whatever option you think is right for you. Scaling is something you can do after the fact as well, if you need more resources. Let's put this though, because we're gonna test things out and just do a demo. We're gonna set this to the lowest option for this example. Now, before we pick our location, it's worth noting that if you're using DigitalOcean and you are based in Australia, or you have an Australian audience, it's good to see that they've now recently added in an option for Sydney in Australia. So you can choose that option should you want to. For our example though, I'm gonna stick with London because that's what I'm kind of based. Underneath, you can see then it tells us the hourly rate and also the monthly rate for this particular setup. So once I'm happy with everything, I'm going to click on launch now, and that'll then take a few minutes to go and set the server up for us and configure everything. So once that's done, we'll move on to the next stage. So after a few minutes, we now have our new server all set up and also our multi-site copy of WordPress installed. Let's go ahead and open our server up. There's all the information about our server and all we need to do if you want to access the multi-site is go into applications. There's our multi-site, we can click to open up, and there's all the settings for our multi-site. So there's a couple of things we want to do at this point. We want to map our domain, and then we want to apply the SSL certificate to it before moving on to something along the lines of connecting up GitHub. So how do we do all that? It's relatively simple. If we head over into the domain management on the left-hand side, this will give us the ability now to connect our domain up to our server. So the first thing we need to do is tell it what domain we want to use. I'll just go ahead, drop that in there, making sure you include the www dot at the beginning, but don't use the HTTPS or anything else in there. Now what we need to do is go ahead, click on Save Changes. That will now take a few moments to go ahead and connect that up, and then we need to move over into our domain management software, our domain registrar, or anywhere you want to set up and configure your DNS settings, and we need to then tell it how to connect it up to our Cloudways account. Now this might sound daunting, but it actually is incredibly simple. For this example, I'm gonna be using a Namecheap account where I've got a couple of domains that I play around with. As you can see, by hopping into the domain list, we can then go into the domain we actually want to set up. In this example, we're gonna go ahead and open the relevant one up. I'm gonna click on Manage on the right-hand side. Inside there, we're gonna hop over to the Advanced DNS Settings. You can see I have no DNS settings set up inside here, but if you do, all you need to do is go ahead and delete them. We're gonna set up our own custom ones for Cloudways. So we need to add two records. All we're going to do is click on Add New Record. First one we're going to choose is an A record. We're simply going to put the at symbol inside here, and we're going to use the IP address of our server. To find that, let's head back over into Cloudways. We're going to come to our access details, and you can see there's our public IP. That's the IP address of our server. All we're going to do is click to copy it. Once we've copied that, we're going to head back over into our registrar, and we're going to just pop in that IP address. We're going to paste that inside there, and we're going to click on the little check mark. There's the first record. Next, we need to add another record in. This time, this is going to be a CNAME record. The host needs to be www, and all this basically means is that if someone uses the www dot our domain name, it will then push it over to the correct place. So we kind of cover the non-www and the www version. That's a lot of Ws, but you kind of get where I'm coming from. So what we need to do now is just put in the domain for our site. 
So let's just pop that inside there without the www dot, making sure we've got no spaces. Click on the check again, and we're done. Now, this may take a few moments, a couple of minutes, maybe even a couple of hours to go ahead and populate. Now, we can check that very easily. If we head over to a website called dnschecker.org, we can simply go ahead, drop in the domain we want to check, and we can then check what records we want to look at. So this is currently set to the A record. We click on search, and you can see that's actually gone through. So the A records are working perfectly. Let's now come over to our C name and do the same search. And as you can see, that's still waiting to populate. So that may take five, 10 minutes, maybe a little longer. But once that's done, then we can start to check out the domain. Because at the moment, if we try to access it, you'll see we get site can't be reached. So let's wait for that to finish, wait for that to come through, and then we can proceed on to the next step, which is going ahead and applying the SSL certificate to our newly connected domain for our website. So now that the domain is propagated and everything is set up, the next thing we need to do is apply that SSL certificate. Now this is something that you can use totally free and it's incredibly easy to set up. Heading back over into the application panel, what we're gonna do is we're gonna to come to the SSL certificate on the left-hand side. We can choose from Let's Encrypt, or if we have our own certificate, we can add that in from here. We'll choose Let's Encrypt, which is totally free. We simply need to give it a email address. We're gonna to connect to this, and also pop in our domain underneath, including the www. Once we've done that, we're gonna click on Install Certificate, and that'll take a few moments, and then we'll have the SSL certificate connected to our account. Now, if you use Git integration and you want to connect this up to your multi-site, it's incredibly simple and straightforward using the applications panel. Let me just show you how you can do this. Now, I'm going to use GitHub for this example, but you can use other alternatives. And there's documentation included on the Cloudway service to give you more information should you need to. So let's go ahead and take a look. We've got this option called Deployment via Git. We can select that, and then we can go ahead and generate our SSH key. Let's do that first. That's going to take a few moments to go and connect that up. And you can see now that's created the SSH key. We'll now click to view the SSH key. We can choose to download this key if we want to as a text file to keep it safe somewhere. But for this example, I'm simply going to copy it. I'll choose that. I'll click to close this down. We'll head over to GitHub. And I've already got a repository set up. So I'm going to go over into my repository. What we need to do now is go into the settings and connect the repository through to our server using that SSH key. We're going to open up the settings panel. Inside there, we've got the option for deploy keys. We'll choose that. You can see that currently there's no keys set up. So we're going to click to add a deploy key. We're going to give this a title. I'm going to drop the key in underneath. So we'll just paste that inside there. For this example, I'm going to allow write access as well. I'm going to click on add key. We've now created that basic connection. So now we need to go over to the code window. And inside there, we're going to expand this code button. And you can see there's the code we need to connect it out, making sure that we choose the SSH option. We'll copy that from there, head back over into Cloudways, into our application. We're going to click inside our Git remote address, and we're going to paste this in. But we're going to make sure we remove the .git at the end. We don't need that. We'll click Authenticate. Providing everything is okay, that'll take a few moments to go over. And you can see now that's authenticated. We can now choose the branch. If we click to open that up, you can see main is the only branch I've got set up. So we'll choose that from there. And our deployment path by default is the public underscore HTML folder. But you can add additional folders inside here should you want to, just making sure you end them with the forward slash. Once you've done that, click on start deployment, and then you can deploy to and from your GitHub repositories. Now, the final thing I want to touch upon is site migration. If you already have a multi-site WordPress site set up and you'd like to migrate this over to Cloudways, you have two options. The first, you can use the professional people behind Cloudways to do the migration for you. This is hassle-free, worry-free, and should take care of everything for you. However, if you want to do this yourself, you can do just that. All you need to do is go into your application and you'll find an option called Migration Tools. Hit the Migration Tools option, download and follow the instructions to migrate your multi-site over into Cloudways. And that's pretty much what I want to cover in this sponsored video from Cloudways. Hopefully you found this useful and if you want to see the other videos in this playlist, they'll be linked down below. As always, all the applicable links are in the description. My name is Paul C. This is WP Tuts and until next time, take care.